Welcome to this edition of Diary of a Madman. We are live using video this week for no apparent reason, just because we're getting ready for the Your Mac Life show later on, and we've got to get all this stuff set up anyway. So I thought we'd do a video. Uh, over there is Kim. Say hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi, by the way, how's your, how's your fast going? It's great. <coughs> have you eaten anything today? Nope. I think she's lying. No, I haven't. Why, why have you decided to go on a fast? Just to have a cleanse. Okay, what's why have you decided to go on a cleanse? Because I've felt bloated for the last few days. And how does fasting and or cleansing fix that? I don't know. It stops me eating the shit that makes me bloated. I don't know. What's the difference between a fast and a cleanse? A cleanse, normally you actually take something that forces the food and stuff like a fiber kind of thing to make you poop more or something like that. So you're not doing that? No, I do you're not just have the fasting. means to cleanse. I'm just fasting. I'm on a liquid diet. <laughs> you may notice that liquid is not water. Mm -hmm. That liquid is. And it's not pee either. <laughs> this is how classy Kim is. <laughs> it was a good deal. She bought a four liter bottle of boxed wine. What do you mean it was a good deal? Mm -hmm. That's four liters. Four liters of urine is not a good deal. Four liters for 29 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. If, if it you was bought it in bottles, it would cost you 50 bucks. Okay, hang on. Okay, first of all, what is this? This is Peller Estates Proprietor's Reserve Chardonnay. It's not a bad Chardonnay. Elegant, medium body, complex. Not bad. Is this stuff you usually drink? I like Chardonnay. Yeah, not necessarily no, no. that brand. I'll okay, drink see, that that's one. the question. I'll drink any of them. <laughs> but I prefer a Chardonnay. So. so you're saying you have a discerning palate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'll, I'll drink anything. Now, in her defense, uh, last, I think it was the last year, I interviewed the editor-in-chief of Wine Spectator magazine, a very well-known, well-respected magazine. They just come up with a new iOS app for the iPad. And so we're interviewing them for the Your Mac Life show. And I asked them the question about boxed wine because my mother was notorious for her giant eight-gallon thing of boxed wine that she absolutely loved. And she put that, that was a, whenever you wanted to get something for mom, you just got her a bottle of boxed wine. Well, box of, of wine. Didn't even matter what kind. It was always white wine. Mm -hmm. She had the same sort of palate that you do. Uh, <laughs> discerning. <laughs> white? Good enough. Mm -hmm. um, but I asked him about that because back in the day, boxed wine had a really shitty reputation. Like boxed wine was guaranteed to be mm -hmm. bad wine. Mm -hmm. Good not wine either. did not come in boxes. But nowadays, I asked him, he said, yeah, there are some, not necessarily this, there are some good boxed wines. No, not good as yeah. super uber fancy stuff but good enough for most people to drink mm -hmm. and one of the things that people get i guess intimidated by with wine is the way wine is described I mean, uh, elegant medium body complex what the fuck does that mean it doesn't actually mean anything does it mm. do you care no but w what it should be is i drink it i try it if i like it exactly I drink it again but so many people are intimidated. And that should be put back in the fridge. Well, let's put it back in your damn fridge. <laughs> so many people are intimidated by wine because the way people talk about wine. Mm -hmm. The thing with wine is if you like wine, buy wine. Buy, mm. what is that? That's you? Buy an inexpensive bottle. Where, where the hell are you going? Nowhere. I'll just let it go to the answering machine. I just didn't want it vibrating on the table because it makes a loud noise. Buy what, buy what you like. Buy what tastes good. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Don't listen to r ratings. And there's been so many times and so many uh, surveys and surveys, studies sh uh, that have shown one about a year and a half, two years ago, that got the guy in a lot of trouble. He retested wine from magazines that had been given like a 91, 92, really, really good rating. He retested it with the same critics, mm -hmm. but told the critics that it was cheap boxed wine. And they all lowered their ratings. And the reverse is true, too. He took stuff that had low ratings, not that was garbage, but ratings of 75 and 80, gave it to the same critic, but told the critic it was more expensive wine, mm -hmm. and he rated it higher. Because they're fucking snobs. <laughs> not they're snobs. Yeah, they are. It's, snobs. It's, it's that perception can drive reality. If you perceive something as good, if you're a you'll, snob. You'll, <laughs> you'll think it's good. So, yeah, I, I know one kind of wine. I know uh, a red wine made from grapes called Montepulciano. It's my favorite wine only because that's what I drank in Italy and I really like it. I've never had a bo bad bottle of Montepulciano. 
So whenever I look for a wine to drink, I buy Montepulciano. So that's what you can do. Find the stuff. You used to do like Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know what a Chardonnay was if you smacked me with the grapes. I wouldn't have a clue what that word means. But if you like Chardonnay, buy Chardonnay. I wouldn't be able to pick one out no, of a, a, a selection of white wines, yeah. but I just know I like the taste. I wouldn't even know the Chardonnay was white. You know, if you <laughs> like Pinot, Pinot Noir, that sounds like it's black. Mm -hmm. So I'd assume that was red. I could be wrong. I have no idea. Don't care. Buy what you like. Buy what tastes good. I don't know why we got off on a little wine rant. Because um, you brought the damn box in here oh out of the fridge. I thought the box. I thought it was funny that you were this giant bottle of box wine. It just cracks me up. Um, I don't know who sent me this. This is not. This is a joke. Uh, at forty, I recently and very drastically changed careers, becoming an apprentice electrician. I love it and feel like I finally found my calling. I'm working my hands, using my brain, and building something tangible after years of what felt like corporate busy work. My issue is, oh no, sorry, this is, this is, a, a, this is a, a dear prudence thing. My issue is I'm a lesbian. I don't know how to answer when my coworkers very directly ask me, are you married? Yes. What's your husband do? Uh, and no kids? You just haven't found the right man. No joke, I got that one on Friday. I don't want to sell my coworkers short, and I've never felt the need to lie or pretend, mainly because I find it too tiring. But the vibe around the lunch table is not exactly a P-flag meeting, and I find myself stammering and deflecting. My wife has an andro androgynous name and suggested I just fake it, but that seems ridiculous to me. Any suggestions? <laughs> I never get all these kind of qu Just be honest. How, how would you how would you be honest? What, what, what would you say to somebody if you if you were a lesbian, and someone asked you, "Are you married?" And you you were, would you say yes? I say yes. Okay. To a woman. Dear Prudence has a great response. She I says, "You don't say that you're nervous about what would happen if you simply answered honestly and forthrightly and said, yes, 'Yes, I'm married. My wife and I haven't decided about kids yet.'" There you go. The problem the construction worker is having is that she does not work in a gay-friendly environment. Mm -hmm. Generally, and this is obviously a generalization. So a bit homophobic. Yeah, construction workers tend to be big, manly man, mas masculine type butch fellas. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, and this is going to get me in trouble, it's generally assumed if you work construction, if you work in a, as an electrician and you're a female, it generally assumes you're gay. No. Don't you think? No. No? No. And I, and I don't like the stereotype that just because you're a macho man means you're homophobic either. Oh, no, I, I didn't say that, did I? I hope I didn't say that. No, but you came off as like I apologize know, the, for that, the construction industry is full of manly men. It is. I didn't say they were homophobic manly men. I said they were manly men. Well, construction is a, a manly man type job, whether mm -hmm. you're female or male. It's, it's physical. It's physical, physical, tough job. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's physical. That can be a man. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that women can't do construction. No. Uh, I would never ever say that. The only thing women can't do is dunk a basketball. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. I know they can't. Don't email me. Shut up. Um, but y what you were saying off the top is true, except for the fact that that's what she's afraid of: is that by being honest and saying I'm gay, I have a wife, we haven't decided on kids yet. Um, she's worried what the industry will, what the, her coworkers might say or think or do. Mm -hmm. That's understandable too, because again, because people tend to be homo homophobic in that industry. But like I said, the other side of the, uh, the the other side of the coin is that people generally assume that if you're female construction, you're gay, mm -hmm. rightly or wrongly. That's that's the assumption that people make. Um, I think the last show we did, we would we were still in Mexico, Mexico, Me Mexico, isn't it Mexico? Um, it's been two weeks now. Any further thoughts, last thoughts on our Mexico trip? We were trying to figure out, for the longest time, the negative of the trip, if there were any negatives. And there were no serious negatives, really. I mean, the only Not really. The you only just sweat a lot. <laughs> exactly. The, the only real negative, and even that's this much negative, was sh shitty internet access. Oh, but no, that didn't bother me. It didn't bother slightest. you, exactly. But I, I was working, too. I was doing some of the stuff. But I also wanted to upload stuff and things like that. Um, so that made it a bit a, a very, very minor issue. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the food also for me was a minor minor issue. I don't think it was an issue for me. It I wasn't. It, was good. it wasn't spectacular all the time. But I don't like all that fancy shit. I don't want fancy shit. I just want good food. Like for example, their their meat was quite often dry. I thought they was good. I, <coughs> I, had, no good. Good. I had, had no. I had no good choice. pork there. Um, mm. At one point, there was uh, um, pork ribs that were literally inedible. I couldn't even bite through them. Mm. Um, but that again, that's minor. But uh, that uh, falls down to the fact the style of. Um, the buffet thing. You were cooking for the masses and putting yes, it out there. Right. On, it's, it's hard. It's oh, it's absolutely like hard. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I, I would not. I would not I disagree with that. But yeah, overall, and again, to me, that was a minor issue. Yep. I would highly recommend if you were ever interested in. And I'd go back there again. Going to a Mexican all-inclusive resort type thing for relatively low prices. It sounds like a lot when you put your credit card out there, but when you think about it, for the price we paid for day. We couldn't, as we said, we couldn't have gotten a hotel in a major city anywhere in the world, food and let alone food and drink and all the other kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it would, if you needed more information about it, you can go to their Facebook page, uh, Grand Sunset Princess, or send us an email, diaryofamadman at yml.me. Eight British expressions explained. Mm -hmm. So let's see if you can explain these British yeah, expressions yeah. to me. Load of cobblers. Yeah, it's a load of trollop. That doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. The, the trollop is a tramp. Is a, it's a it's a loose yeah, you woman. You can use it as whatever. It's a load of bullshit. Really? Cobblers. Yeah. Why? Cobblers doesn't sound bad. I don't know. That's what that's what it means. Okay. How's your father? Mm, yeah, it doesn't mean how's your dad. Yeah. It, 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 why would you say that? <laughs> it means you kind of. Uh, this and that kind of so-so kind of how's your father like a bit I don't know see now their explanation is that hard to I don't know yeah, according to Moore this turn of the century phrase was probably coined by comedian Harry Tate who used it to change the subject when something he didn't want to talk about came up eventually it became slang for sexual activity how's your father oh yeah <laughs> is it yeah, 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 yeah. Have a bit of how's your father. Yeah, really? yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's funny. I haven't heard that for so long. That's why it took a while. Yeah. <laughs> now here's what, what. What are you doing on your phone? You're not focused on. I what am. We're doing. I am. You are I not. Am. You're typing away at something else. So obviously, and you're not ta talking into the microphone. So both those things tell me. Oh. You are not focused on this show. I am now. Put the phone down. I will. <laughs> In a few seconds. There we go. Okay. How's all your father? Now, yep. now, I've heard you say this, all mouth, no trousers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my mom used to say that a lot. What does it mean? That means you talk the talk, but you don't actually do anything about it. Like, all mouth and no action, basically. <laughs> all mouth, no trousers. We have one, um, all hat, no cattle. Oh, okay. It means some very kind of the yeah. same thing. You, 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 just, you just talk bullshit. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't know what you're talking about, but you're, you're trying to fake it. Mm -mm. It's not faking it. It means you talk the talk, but you don't actually ever end up doing anything. It's not about. It's not faking. It's not. It's. It means you talk, but you never do anything. Oh, interesting. So it's a, a yeah. different tone. Yeah. Than all hat, no cattle. Yeah, it's not that. It's not. You're talking as if you know something about something, but you d actually don't. Yeah. No, it means you're talking about something and saying you're going to do this and saying you're going to do this, but you actually don't do. So I'm going to go over and kick that guy's ass, and you, and you never actually do it. Right. Or y you say, oh, I'm going to, uh, you know, work harder, or I'm going to go on a diet, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be a better person, and blah, 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 and then actually don't do it. Someone over there is all, all hat, no trousers. Yeah. What are you flipping me off for? Come here and say that. I'm, I am here. <laughs> Bob's your uncle. What does that mean? It means, it means something's good. There you right? go. There you go. It's uh, it's happened. It's a positive statement too, isn't it? Right. Mm. Bob's your uncle. Um, no, it means the the end of something, like the, the production, like um, you put this and this together – and everything goes great, and Bob's your uncle. Like, it's perfect. It's all worked out. This is one I've never heard. On the pull. 
On the pull? Yeah. What yeah. does that mean? That's what guys do. They go on the pull. <laughs> what does that mean? It means they go out looking for a, a girlfriend or a bit of something. <laughs> a bit of, a bit of as your father. <laughs> <laughs> they go on the pull for a bit of as your father. What's the other, uh, a bit of, uh, um, oh, I've heard the term before, a, a bit of a bit of crumpet. Oh, crumpet. A bit of crumpet, yeah. Yep. You're basically looking for a one-night stand. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Uh, sweet Fanny Adams. Oh, well, F.A., doing fuck all. Oh, is that what that That's means? What it means, Sweet Fanny Adams. S- we say S.F.A., Sweet Fuck All. Yeah. So, but you, 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 you'll Fanny say Adams. Sweet Fanny Adams. Yeah, What's the one that you always say? The, the uh, oh, Gordon Bennett. Gordon Bennett. What does that mean? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who he was, but yeah. <laughs> Gordon Bennett. Uh, where's the one? Um, oh, th- this is. We've talked, I think, a couple times here, and certainly uh, on Twitter, about a, a very funny um, Twitter account called Very British Problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's at So Very British. Want to look it up? They've got a TV show. They've got three episodes. The fourth one's supposed to be coming out soon. About okay. Britain. And they got books. And they have, they have books. They have a whole bunch of stuff. Mm. Yeah, they get some very very funny uh, tweets that are about very British problems. This one, I read this one and had to ask Kim if this was true because it's so goddamn funny. Letting crisps slowly dissolve in your mouth rather than deafen the office with frightful crunching. Do you seriously would do that? Yeah, I've done that. That's hilarious. Yeah, crisps as in chips. Crisp chips and potato chips. Yeah. So you would buy potato chips, Mm -hmm. sit in your cubicle at at your desk, take a potato chip out. If I was close to somebody else working, I'd put it in my mouth and just like let it melt. (laughs) Because you want to eat it, <laughs> but you don't want to make a lot of noise. Yeah. So you just sit there yeah, with a chip in your mouth, letting it... <laughs> Until it was soft <laughs> enough that it didn't make a noise when you crunched it. Yeah. You really think the people next to you would care? I would, because I hate noisy eaters. Yeah, but I, I understand that, the noisy eating thing of the idea having that... Having your mouth open, yeah. Having your mouth... Mm, 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 that even, would make but sense. But even eating something that's really crunchy in your mouth is still quite noisy when you're... When you're close to somebody, I feel like somebody's putting me in the eye with a needle. Just but I don't think it would it would make a difference. You think it would make a difference to the person next to you? Yeah, like I say, I would. <laughs> like listening to a chow cow chewing cud. <coughs> this is kind of funny. Twelve American customs that are considered offensive in other countries. Being One American. Th- I mean, come on now. <laughs> Oops. One of the things is we, we don't realize until we travel that there are things that we take for granted in either North American or Western society. These things are, we're, we're, we're calling it Americans, but it's lots of folks are, are guilty of this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. For example, using your left hand. It's consi- oh, to eat. To eat in yeah, it's Africa, it's Middle East. Because that's what you wipe your bum with. Yeah. But I don't wipe my bum with my left hand. But what I'm saying is, yeah. th- th- in th- there, they yes, do. Yes, they do. They do all the sanitary things with the right hand, the unsanitary things with their left hand. Yes. So and that's why when they, they steal, they get their uh, <coughs> left, no, they get their right hand chopped yes. off, which is really bad because then they get left to wipe their bum and eat with that's the same right, hand, one hand, which is very bad, yes, in their culture. Tipping in Japan, South Korea. I don't know if it's considered offensive in Japan. Mm-hmm. It's just not done. You don't tip. Right. In Japan. Maybe I've never been to South Korea. I don't know if it would be uh, considered offensive yeah. from the point of view of the person would be upset, but it's, it's just not common. The same with, I think, Australia, too. Yeah. Tipping isn't very no, common. No, but even in Britain, it was never a really a big thing. I think it's mostly in North America. tipped when we were <laughs> in No kidding, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thumbs up. In the Middle East, Latin America, Western Africa, oh. Russia, and Greece. Well, don't you remember in Shakespeare? There's one of the Shakespeare things. It was like, you know, you, if you give his thumb or something, that was... Thumbs up is the same meaning as holding up the middle finger for Americans. Oh, right. Now, in Britain, the middle finger doesn't mean anything. No, it's more but like that. it's not only the two fingers, the mm-hmm. but it's two fingers with your other fingers facing towards you. Because that means... Well, that's victory. Victory. Yeah. So but this victory. means this up means yours. Fuck you. That's fuck you. It's funny that it's yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because in North America, it doesn't matter which, which, which way you do it. That's a peace sign. What, even that way? Yeah, yeah. In North Ooh, America. No. <laughs> Ooh, no. <laughs> no. In North America, either way you do it is peace. Oh, no. 
And if up yours, it's just the the single yeah. finger. Yeah, and and they do this. That's that's they very used to do that Mediterranean. <laughs> yes, it's very European. Yeah. Sitting in the back of a cab in Australia, New Zealand, parts of Ireland, Scotland, and the Midlands, it's considered rude to not ride shotgun. Yeah, I would always get. I don't. I mean, not that I took cab very often, but if you're on your own, yeah, you'd sit in front. In North America, you never sit in front unless the back is full. Right. You would never. If you in a London cabbie, you wouldn't necessarily sit in the front unless the guy said, "Did you mm -hmm. want to?" Yeah. You'd sit in the back because they have that petition. Yeah. But in all other European, like Greece and places where I've traveled, I've always just gotten the front. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Laughing with your mouth open is offensive in Japan. Some crazy Japanese will cover the mouth when they yeah. laugh. I got in the habit of doing that when I had braces mm, yeah. when I was a teenager. Being fashionably late in countries like Germany. That's disgusting. I mm -hmm. hate being late. But the reverse is true. Being on time in Latin America. Is you're supposed to It's supposed to be expensive. You're supposed to be late. Being on time is rude to the host. Yeah, so they told you when you get there. But they didn't mean it. Oh, I do. Wearing sweatpants, flip-flops, wrinkly clothes, or mm. baseball caps in public, notably in Japan and most of Europe. That's so North American. This is very North American. So bad. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, it may have changed, but, like, oh, God, that's like, that's like, uh, what do I call them? Street legal pajamas. <laughs> oh, it's just, and they're not, and they shouldn't be street legal. They're just, oh, it's bad. Yeah, sweat, sweatpants, mm. if you're going to and from the gym. Right. Around your house. Right. You're playing a sport, then they're fine. Right. Flip flops. But going I shopping? Yeah, going shopping. It's, it's my I, I told Kim this over the weekend. We saw, uh, we watched Good Hair, the very funny Chris Rock movie. And I remember not only my mother, but my aunts and other women in my neighborhood, black women in my neighborhood when I was growing up, they'd walk around in public with these giant rollers in their hair. Mm -hmm. And they and might, a headscarf they, on. they might throw a headscarf over, but mm -hmm. not just around the house, but out in public, like mm -hmm. getting on the bus. But they used to do that in England. Really? And and I think in the 50s, like post-war, that was common for women to, you know, be getting their hair ready and still h go about their business doing shopping and stuff. Yeah. Altering your meal in France, Italy, Spain, and Japan. For mm -hmm. example, asking for condiments to alter your meal may raise some eyebrows. Before you ask for a condiment, see if there are any on the table. If not, you should refrain. Oh. That's an insult. You can see why that would be yeah. an insult because you're... You're See, I think it's cook. an ill, ins not Ill, Ill salt. Ill salt. I don't know how much have I had. Um, when people put salt and pepper on their food before they've tasted it. Before they've it, tasted it, yeah. That's Ill salt. That's I think it's, I I think it's silly. That. I don't think it's offensive. No. But no, some places it would be considered offensive. Mm. Showing the soles of your feet is I offensive. Hate feet. I, I hate feet. I just hate feet. In Arab, Muslim, Hindu, and Buddhist countries, showing the soles of your feet is a sign of disrespect. As, why? Do you know why? sense they're considered the lowest and dirtiest part of the body since they touch the ground mm -hmm. which makes sense yeah. i don't hate feet that much but yeah I'm not i don't like them i don't like them anywhere near me eating anywhere that does not serve food in rwanda and japan is considered rude to eat anywhere that isn't a restaurant bar or hotel this includes eating on a bus or while walking outside i wish that was true here yeah, yeah that's actually not a bad kind of rule no i like that, that rule i think it's a good rule hmm. walking down the street eating no it's just no no sit down in a park just no 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 but then you can have a picnic and that'd be a shame. refusing food is considered offensive in a lot of countries mm-hmm whether you're whether you're hungry or not, yes. whether you just eaten, right? Um, especially in Arab countries. My dad would le never let me <coughs> go. No, thank you. If I was, if I had to try it, even if I didn't think I liked it, no. I was never allowed to say I don't like it because my dad would say, "How do you know you don't <laughs> like it if you haven't tried it?" <laughs> Every parent says <laughs> that. You did that with Matt. Every parent oh, has done that. And that's why he eats everything yeah, now. Yeah. But yeah. Speaking of eating everything, polishing off your meal is considered offensive in China, the Philippines, Thailand, and Russia. Mm. It signifies that you're still hungry and that they failed to provide you with enough food. Oh, that'd be me then. Yeah, Every time <laughs> I'd be offending them. Well, I've often wondered if it's the case for us who grew up poor well, that we we're the ones. Waste not want yeah, Exactly. Because mm. you didn't get enough food when you were a kid. So you ate you everything, and I ate you yeah. off off your plate. If you were finished, I eat yours. But I also, my mom's. you were told to not waste food. Yeah. So whatever you were given, you would 
eat. Then that's why, you know, I used to eat like mounds of food and I had to physically force myself to serve l- out less because otherwise if I served a lot, I'd end up eating it all because <laughs> I didn't want to waste it. I think that's one of the reasons why we, um, one of the things that uh, dietitians, d- nutritionists say, the first thing you do when you're trying to diet and not a crash diet like a fast is either A, buy smaller plates mm-hmm. or B, put fewer, put smaller portions on yeah, your plate. That's true. It's one of the things that drives us North Americans crazy when we go to Europe is you order a meal and they come, it comes with a little tiny bit of food, which to Europeans is sufficient amounts of food, but just mm-hmm. North Americans, we're so used to getting just a mound of everything and then stuffing it all over. That's why we're fat. Well, it's like I remember the first time I saw like a North American breakfast and some guy had steak. I was like, what? He's <laughs> like having dinner <laughs> for breakfast? <laughs> Why is he not having half a grapefruit or a bowl of cereal? <laughs> steak and eggs for breakfast? Yeah. That just seems like, uh, and I, I've seen that on many, many menus. Um, but the idea of having a steak for breakfast, even steak and eggs, mm-hmm. just, I, I can't, that just seems to be like too much. But then again, it actually is, th- is the right time of the day to be eating if you're going to eat well that's the best time of the day to eat actually Why? because you've got all day to burn it off and you're not going to bed and then sitting with all that <coughs> like people do yeah. after dinner in your stomach um your your one of your favorite symbols is yin yang no finger symbols she's always doing that I, I oh yeah in Spain, those are the devil's horns in many Latin American countries. Yeah, no, that's why I think that's why bikers do it. Doing this could get you a punch in the face. Oh, uh, maybe the not. The hand gesture me. means cuckold or your wife is cheating on you. <laughs> <laughs> How would you know that? But okay. Something we do all the time that we don't think about. The okay sign. Just a simple that. Oh. Y- but mm. you can see how yes, it could be offensive. Yes. To be in, in, in North America, it's like, yeah, okay, great. Mm-hmm. But in uh, certain parts of Middle and Southern Europe, the gesture is considered offensive. Mm. As in, you're a zero or you're nothing. In some Mediterranean countries, such as Turkey, it basically means you're an asshole. The asshole, yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, fingers crossed mm-hmm. can be considered offensive in Vietnam. Yeah. Well, it means good luck in the UK and most other Western countries. Mm-hmm. In Vietnam, crossing your fingers is a sign for female genitalia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Mm. All righty. Mm. Everyone's looking at their fingers right now going, really? How? Mm. Uh, how, how, how is that a sign for fem- female gender? Yeah, I can't really find it. Can't yeah. quite wrap mm. your mind around that. This is a story from uh, a while back. Uh, it's unusual to have this kind of stuff happen in Canada. We're used to seeing this stuff happen in the U.S. A uh, high school principal from Guelph, Ontario, Canada, says he was simply trying to send a strong message about dressing appropriately when he used the word skanky to describe what type of style students should be avoiding. Uh-huh. The principal of Centennial Collegiate Vocational Institute purported to use the word during a public address. At first, many of us thought he, we had heard him wrong because it was fairly shocking, a student told CBC News. The, world, the word skanky means unattractive or disgusting. Or at least that's the way it's defined in the online version of the Canadian Oxford Dictionary. Do you agree? I don't know. I thought skanky meant you dress more like a whore. I think it's gender related. You would never call a guy skanky. Mm, no. Skanky is always reserved yeah. for women. Yep. And yep. yeah, and it's dress trashy, trampy, yeah. whorish, whatever it might be. Yeah. So for the principal of the school to say don't dress skanky, mm-hmm. he was just talking to the girls. Right. He wasn't talking to the boys. No. The principal boys, don't boys don't dress skanky, though. Well, th- 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 yeah, yeah, true, but they they can dress as <coughs> how do how do guys as offensively as women? How do guys dress offensively? Uh, if you if you're talking about high school students, let's talk about uh, the pants down around their ankles. Now, do your pants pull your pants up? Yeah, so I, I must can see your I underwear. Seen their underwear. Um, yeah. One but of the what's pro- skanky? For girls. Well, one of the things that these guys were talking about, you often hear schools talk about girls can't wear tank tops. Mm. They can't wear crop tops. They can't wear spaghetti straps. 
Mm. They can't wear short skirts. They can't, they can't, they can't, they can't. Mm. The problem I have with all this is that we're constantly telling women to hide their bodies. Mm -hmm. We're telling women how to dress. We're telling women what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. How about we tell boys... Pull your pants up. No, no. Your actions towards those women is inappropriate. Oh, even better. Yeah. That just because she wears a particular piece of clothing does not give you the right to comment on it in any way, shape, or form. Or act on it. Wolf whistles or grabs of the ass or pulling bra straps or, or, or. Mm. Why are we sending the message to the boys that... Your actions are inappropriate, not the way they dress. Mm. They dress because they're with the way they want. And yes, it may but be But are they inappropriate? You see, you have to be careful because instinctively, men do what men have always done and males do. And women are actually doing what women have always done, females of any species. They kind of puff up, flirt, make themselves look as pretty as possible, whatever's attractive. And boys do the same okay. thing. And guys react mm -hmm. to that show. Yeah. And reacting to the show is one thing. but React, but not act on it. Yes. That's the and key. But also yeah. the school's telling you that your body should be hidden. Yeah, which is wrong. That's the message that they're telling them. Yeah, I know. That's the problem that we have here. We want people to have freedom of expression. We want people to be free to express themselves. Mm -hmm. But only to the point where your expression doesn't make me horny. Yeah, that's your problem. Exactly. Mm. We don't tell the boys any of this stuff. No. These things are always directed at the girls. Mm. It's never directed at the boys. Maybe this is an argument for school uniforms. I went to school, I w but then I went to a girls' school. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't count. But but most, most even comprehensives back when I went to school, um, not even just private schools, had uniforms. So, yeah, boys and girls wore uniforms. So it also stops that whole class thing. There's no, yes. you're better than me. Oh, yeah. You've got the Nikes and yep, the name right. brand stuff, and I've got the Walmart yep. gear. It doesn't matter. Because that was me as a kid. Right. That was for us. For a lot of kids. That was, yeah. sure, for a lot of kids. Yeah. That we couldn't afford the name brand, the name brand jeans. No. I was wearing Sears Husky jeans for my entire childhood yeah. up until I was in grade yeah. probably eight or I've nine. I've always agreed with school uniform. For that purpose. Because it, it, it keeps everybody on the same It also takes field. less pressure off the parents to buy the latest thing for the kids. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the kids don't. Uh, th th it's, it's the Steve yeah. Jobs idea of fashion. Steve Jobs, for the last, uh, I guess, want to say 15 years, wore the exact same thing. Yeah. New Balance sneakers, jeans, and a mock turtleneck. Black Him mock and turtleneck. Simon um, Cowell. Oh, does he? Okay. No, Simon Cowell wears jeans and a white T-shirt. Yeah. Everywhere. But, th and, and people were asking Jobs, well, why do that? He said, I don't, don't want to think about what I need to wear that day. And by having school uniforms, kids don't have to think about what they're going to wear the next day. No, All the kids wear the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. There's no pressure, oh, he's got a new pair of mm -hmm. these kind of jeans, or she's nope. got a new top, and I have to compete with them. Yeah. I have no problem with school uniforms. Yeah. I, I also think it looks kind of cool, too. It does. Discipline. It's like being in the army. There's a, another, another story about this. Uh, a Moncton, New Brunswick teenager is taking a stand against unjust standards after, after she received the detention for breaking the dress code at Harrison Trimble High School and a one-day suspension for complaining to the vice principal. Lauren Wiggins said she was told the full-length halter dress she was wearing was considered inappropriate and a sexual distraction to fellow students. Oh, because it's a halter neck and it uh, shows more back, which is just stupid, I know. It's idiotic mm. because and she's covered to the floor as well yeah but the message we're telling boys is that these mm. females are objects i know that you shouldn't stare at and the other thing is too what happens when these boys go out into the real <laughs> world <laughs> you're not teaching them respect you're not teaching them any kind of values other than oh don't look don't look. Oh my goodness! Oh, she she she's a harlot. She's a mm. she's she's trampy. See, I I go the other way because I raised my kids the way my mom and dad raised us. Where my mom and dad would walk around the house, not not walk around naked, but you know what I mean. If they were from the bedroom to the bathroom, yep. 
you know, they'd be naked and we'd see them and wha whatever. It was like the human body. That's the problem. The more you cover up and go, ooh, it's taboo, 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 the more of an intrigue it is and yep. the more they're likely to push to see what's there or want to know. And Whereas if you just go, oh, yeah, it's just the frigging girl's shoulder, like if she's wearing spaghetti straps yeah. or it's just a cleavage because she's got a big boob. It's like, oh, well. Or, you know, I can see more of her back. It's just her back. Like, who cares? It's just a human body. That's what it looks like. Control I th yourself. I think, uh, well, that's that's definitely part of it. But I think part of it is it goes back even further to, as you were saying, the education mm -hmm. of people, whether it be in the home or whether it be in school. Yeah. This is, A, just a human bo body. There's nothing wrong with it, nothing bad Any about it. Any of it, it. no. And certainly we can all we can all find a line that says you can't go to school in in a G string and and tassels. All right, we can, I think we can all, we can all agree on that. Yeah. But if she's wearing perfectly acceptable clothes that she could wear to the mall, mm -hmm. then she should be able to wear them to school. Yeah. And we should be teaching boys that that's okay. You can't be an asshole. Like mm -hmm. that. Instead of teaching girls to hide their body, let's teach boys to stop being assholes. Respect them. Yeah. Did you have playgrounds when you were a kid? Yeah. Did you have all kinds of gadgets and stuff on playgrounds when you were a kid? Like climbing frames yeah. and ropes and yeah. shit? Yeah. Climbing frames, is that what you called them? Yeah. We called them monkey bars yeah. when we were kids. We weren't monkeys. You notice nowadays most playgrounds don't have that. S what's that? I said we weren't monkeys. <laughs> That's <anymore>. right. Sorry. <laughs> Have you noticed that most day, most playgrounds you you drive by now they don't have that stuff? No, not very often. We're no. making things so safe. Forget teeter totters. Do you have yeah. teeter totters? Do you call them teeter totters or seesaws? Oh, seesaw. Seesaw. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Most playgrounds don't have those anymore. Yeah, you used to used to do it so hard and then slam down so that your other buddy came out of <laughs> the seat like that was so. Cool. Or you jump off, or you do all the yeah. other the other kind Bam. of stuff. Yeah. Merry go rounds. Roundabouts. R you call them roundabouts. Yeah. yeah. So what was your story about merry-go-rounds? What did you do to kids on merry-go-rounds? Well, you just go fast. Cause they feel like For us, <laughs> exactly. For us, it was always, as you grew up, so you're, you're five or six years you old. stuck in the middle, crouched <laughs> down on the, oh, stop, stop. <laughs> that, that, that was us at five and six I'm years old. Puke. And some big kid, big kid, 10, 11, 12 years old, would just be spinning the goddamn thing and kids would be flying off. Yeah. <laughs> like like neutrinos coming out of an atom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then as you got older, you became one of the big kids. Get on, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is a good thing. I'm glad they got rid of these. Metal slides. Well, yeah, because if you went down them when you had shorts on or a skirt. On a hot day. Yeah. You could get third degree burns, those goddamn yeah. things. Th those were nasty. Stuck. I never had this one. Uh, it looks like it's something in Britain. A witch's hat. Oh, is that like the framework? Yeah. That the kind of the swings the central around and it, it kind of swings and yeah. pivots as at the same time. Yeah, that's kind of lethal. But you Why? Have to hang on. You have to hang on. Because, yeah, I'm looking at the picture. And the kid, I can it's, see just what it's just framework. A kid could fall off and swing and the swing thing, thing hit him. And clunk on the head. Yeah. Uh, monkey bars was definitely one that yeah. was. Yeah, we had. We some. every year we had at least one kid fall off the monkey bars and break an arm. Yeah. yeah was your, what's what's we'll what's dislocate a shoulder. It's what happened? Yeah. It's part of being a kid. Mm -hmm. Is either having that happen to you, or seeing some other kid do it, and you learn, oh, don't do what he just did, mm -hmm. or don't do that thing again. Is there is there a danger that we're making the world too safe for kids? Trying to, it, but you can't. It's impossible because if they don't do it there, they'll do it somewhere else. Isn't there – I think part of it is, though, that as parents, and you can speak to this more than I can, you want to protect your kid. You want to put them in a bubble and not let ever let anything bad happen to them. Yeah, you don't want anything bad to happen to them, but you also don't want to wrap them in cotton wool and yeah. put them in a bubble. No, I, I'm not that kind of parent. I mean, nowadays, we, we f you know, when we were kids, I don't know about, uh, about England, but certainly when we were kids, especially in the summertime, it was always be home by the time the streetlights come on. Yeah. You know, my mother yeah, would literally well. throw us out yeah. of the house after breakfast in yeah. the morning when we, we when we were on summer vacation. And we'd come home for lunch mm -hmm. 
she'd make you a sandwich and throw you back into the house again. Mm-hmm. And you'd come home for supper, and she'd throw you back into the house again. And you came home by 9, 10. My mother had no clue where we were. Mm-hmm. We we weren't. It wasn't like we were getting on the bus and going, like, right. across town. Else, like, we were in the neighborhood. Yeah. And maybe it was easier for her because she knew that the other mothers and parents in the neighborhood were watching it. We all watched it. They all watched out for each other. We didn't know this at the time, but we all, all those parents mm-hmm. watched out for each other's kids. You know, you'd hear someone crying, and, and you look out the window to see whose kid was crying. Mm-hmm. You know, to call someone, or you go down there and take care of it, or bang their heads together, things like that. So maybe that maybe that's part of it, is that you sort of had a, a, a it takes a village kind community. of system. Yeah. A community. Mm-hmm. Which we certainly have a lot less of nowadays. Mm-hmm. Everybody there was too minds their own business or is too scared to intervene for fear of being um, reprimanded for doing something that they thought was being nice or helpful. There was um, uh, a, a, a Twitter um, thing talking about this kind of idea that, that we don't know our neighbors anymore. Mm. The vast majority of people don't communicate, especially in, in the big cities. You may know your neighbor next door or above you, below you to say hi or to give them a nod in the elevator, but you would never speak to them. You would never have a conversation with them. You would never mm. invite them to dinner or tea or coffee. Mm. And so parents <coughs> have this thought in their head that I'm the only one taking care of my kid, and I have to keep an eye on him 24-7. Mm-hmm. Whereas maybe my mom had the advantage of knowing there were 75 other babysitters because we, we were in a community. Yeah. And when all the kids were out playing, all the parents were sort of keeping an eye on them. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's mm-hmm. maybe that's why parents are are, are like this nowadays because they they don't have anyone else to rely on. Yeah, I don't know. Possibility, don't know for sure though. This is a <laughs> Kinder eggs have become. Genderized. There are pink Kinder eggs. Yes, I've I've seen that on some advertising. I work at a concession stand in an ice rink. We sell a bunch of chocolate bars and snacks and shit like Kinder surprise eggs. For those, those who, for our American listeners, you guys don't get these because don't they? No. Did you not know this? No. Kinder eggs are illegal in the U.S. Why? Children can shoot guns, but they're not allowed to have Kinder eggs. Why? What's inside a Kinder egg? Little bits of plastic. Little bits of plastic that a child could choke on. If he was stupid enough to put it in his uh, mouth, yeah. Unlike the Mm. bullets that come out of the guns that kids are allowed to use. Wow. Okay. So one day this woman comes up to the counter with her two little kids. A girl who's probably about six or seven. A little boy, maybe three or four. The mom asks, asks, sorry, mom asks what they want. The little girl points at the Kinder Eggs and says, one of those. I asked if she wanted the white one or the pink one. She said pink. The little boy pointed to the Kinder Egg and says, one of those. I asked if he wanted the white or the pink. He said, pink. Holy shit, it was like I opened the gates of hell. The mom absolutely flipped and was like, you're not getting the pink eggs. It's only for girls. You're not going to get the white one or nothing at all. The little boy looked at his mom and said, but I want the same as she has. The mom completely ignored him and turned to me and gave me a death glare. You can have the white egg. I had to give a little boy a white egg when he wanted the pink so that he could be the same as his big sister, and he started crying. The mom just reiterated that the pink egg was for girls and told him that boys don't cry. Yeah. And this is why we shouldn't genderize fucking chocolate eggs. I agree. You shouldn't genderize chocolate eggs because I like playing with horses, carts, tractors, put together little plastic and stuff. Why do I need a doll in plastic form? I need a pink chocolate doll. It's one of those things that, that hopefully as we get more lack of a better term, evolved, we can get away from boys can only play with G.I. Joe and blue things. But and we're not more evolved. We are more evolved, but we're not. We're, we, we're actually not. getting worse. You think we're getting worse? Worse. Because why would we create friggin' pink kinder surprise things? Why? But Because I never, I never yearned for, when I saw kinder surprise, I never thought, oh, I wish they had pink ones. Like you just it's like, oh that's cool, kind of surprise. It's got something in it that I can put together and play with. Yeah. I I, I don't the, 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 the idea of kinder eggs was the same sort of thing as, as um uh the 
popcorn, you know, Cracker Jacks. There was a toy in it. Mm-hmm. We didn't care what right. color the, the, the Cracker Jacks were. Yeah. We, just, we just wanted the toy. Want to get laid in England? Here are the right words to say. He was trying it on with me. Really? <laughs> what does that mean? He was trying it on? Yeah. I mean, he's like flirting with it was, you. He was hitting on you. Yeah, yeah. I pulled the tidy one last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, I got the best jobby. A jobby? A jobby. Haven't heard that one in a while, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> This is what I always always cracks me up. I don't think North Americans, certainly Americans, realized it until the Austin Power movies came out. He was yeah. up for a shag. Oh, right. I don't. I don't think I mean Canadians had heard it because we lost, watched a lot of British TV or we had British friends or family, but Americans probably hadn't heard that term shag until the Austin Powers movie, mm. and it really confused them for a while. <laughs> what Academic does that mean, baby? Yeah. Oh, bloody hell, the Johnny split. (laughs) The condom broke. (laughs) The Johnny split. Oh, right. (laughs) I never heard that term before either. The Johnny split. What are you doing now on the damn phone? Hey, I'm just replying to somebody. God. Hello, Gromit. (laughs) (laughs) Gromit? Oh, I know. Gromit's all up in your business. Because it's T-I-M-E. Ten things that will end up on this one. Ten things to do in Europe before you die. Mm-hmm. Let me tell me how many things you've actually done. Okay. Okay. Say them. Take a canal tour in Amsterdam. Yeah, done it. Is that something that you get you have to before you die, though? I don't know if you have to. Before I don't you think die. so. I think go to Amsterdam because it's a cool city. But the canal tour, take a walk on the canal. Yeah. Shop the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. Put no. the fucking phone down until no. the show's over. No. No. Yes. No. I I don't know. I'm talking about the Istanbul Bazaar. I'm talking about the phone. Um, no, I wouldn't do that. Have no. you been to Istanbul? Uh, no. I've seen pictures of this bazaar, and it's a really co- one of those cool yeah, yeah. places. I don't know if it's something you need to do before you die, though. Geek out at Trinity College. Trinity College? Oh, my God. You know what Trinity College is? It's geeky. Why would I know anything about geeky? You've got to go see the Book of Kells. The Book of what? The Book of Kells. How do you not know about the Book of Kells? What the hell is that? Oh, my God. It's a ninth century manuscript penned by monks with amazing intricate fonts and illustrations. It is one of the most beautiful. Oh, my God. You barbarian. It is one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. Oh, yeah. If you're in Ireland. Ireland? Yes, I don't know. Dub- Dublin's Trinity College. Yeah. You have to go to see this library. Yeah. That's definitely one of the things. If you, you betcha. <laughs> no, wouldn't do that. Go skinny dipping in Sweden. Go skinny dipping maybe, but why Sweden? Why Sweden? I don't know. Don't get that. When the sun rises at 3 a.m. in the summer and Swedes wander home from a night in the town, post-club skinny dipping is considered perfectly acceptable. But that's normal any anyway, if you're on holiday in Spain or Portugal or whatever and you've come back from the club, it's quite normal <coughs> for people to skinny dip. If I was out with a bunch of Swedish girls, yes, I'd want to go skinny dipping. <laughs> but not just general blokes. Wander through Kensington, Kensington Gardens. Mm, yeah, it's not bad, yeah. But it's not something you got to do before you die. No, no. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's up there in that like top, t- top ten list of things to do in Europe. No. Nope. Examine David in Florence. No. If you're in Florence, you have to go see David. Why do you have to examine him? You have to look at it. You have to it's a give him bu- a prostate. <laughs> it's a beautiful sculpture. You've got to go see it. Really? Yes. If you're if you're in, I'm not saying you'd go to Europe for that, but if you're in Florence, you've got to go see it. If you're in Rome, it's an hour and a half drive to Florence. Drive yeah. to Florence and go to the gallery and see it. it's a beautiful, beautiful sculpture. Eat oysters in Croatia. Yeah. It's like eating snot. No. That's like a one big loogie. No. <laughs> Sleep in a car in Stuttgart. Actually, what they're talking about is there's a car-themed hotel in Stuttgart where you can sleep in replicas of famous in Stuttgart? cars. In Stuttgart? Stuttgart. Not Stutt. Stuttgart. 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 So, yeah. for example, you can sleep in a replica of 
of the uh, VW uh, Beetle number fifty three. Oh, Herbie. Herbie, thank you. Jeez, I was going to call him Henry. Mm-hmm. Cats of Palenco show in Andalusia. We've done that. Really, in, in Andalusia. Yeah, no. Andalusia. Andalusia. Don't start that shit. Spanish. Um, Andalusia. Yeah, I think I I would like to see it. It's not a must. It's not a bucket list must see mm-hmm. for you die kind of thing. Take a carriage ride through Krakow. Mm-hmm. I have no interest. In, no offense to my, my, any anyone who's Polish. No interest in Poland. Yeah, carriage rides are cool, though. Carriage rides are cool, but yeah. I've, I, I've been on carriage rides in New York City, and, and my, well, Krakow is a lovely city. I'm sure that that that's not. That's a, that was a shitty list. That was yeah, that was not that good. What would you say would be say one of your top three things you must do in Europe before you die? Must do in Europe? Yes. I'd say visit Rome. Go to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Rome, Eiffel Tower, and uh, Greece. Really? Hmm. Any, anywhere in Greece? Just be in Greece? Yeah, Greece. Just do, Well, Athens, uh, but the Mediterranean, the whole, yeah. I'd say the British Museum. That's one of the world's great museums. The Rosetta Stone is there. The Elgin Marbles are there. It's an amazing, amazing mm. museum. But it's one of those museums that, uh, again, apologies to our American friends, you can't just visit in two hours. No. Don't just give yourself, oh, i got an hour. Let's go see the business. No, no. But that's there's so much to do in Europe. Yeah. There's like a million things, and it depen- depends what but you're But things you have in. to do. But things, no, you don't have to. Why does anybody have to do anything? Because you should do what you want to do, depending on what you're interested in. You're missing out so on a world experience. From. Oh, I know, I know. No, I'm not, though. You just said you're missing out on the experience of looking at that sculpture of David. That's not my thing. I appreciate it's good art. It's a, an excellent sculpture. But that's not my thing. So would I, oh, I have to do that before I die? No, I don't. I'd sooner sit in a dog refuge place surrounded by blooming orphan puppies before I died. That would mean more to me because that's me. Yeah. I, 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 these lists are because it depends on the individual. Not it's who you are. That's what matters. Finished? Mm, yep, for we'll now. We'll rant over? Yep. Okay, good. Folks, that's been Diary of a Madman. Thank you guys very much for joining us. D-O-A-M-M dot com is the website. You find us on the iTunes store also. Give us a review if you'd like. Send us emails to D-O-A-M-M at Y-M-L dot M-E. Until next time, she's been Kim Guy. And I've been Sean King, and you've been listening to Diary of a Madman. See ya!